Welcome back to the next episode of Amplify Agile. I'm Kiara Zapanta, and today we are discussing strategic planning and OKRs, which is a collaborative goal setting method that can be adopted at different levels of an organization. Um, here I have with me Christopher Roosh with um, Agile Rising to discuss OKRs. So Christopher, why don't you just give us a quick introduction of yourself and, and your background? Thanks, Kira. It's great to be here. Uh, as Kira said, my name is Chris Roosh. I'm the CEO of Agile Rising. Uh, I'm a safe SPCT, and uh, I, along with the rest of Agile Rising, um, are an uh, Aptio partner, and we help leaders of organizations uh, to improve their strategic planning process um, and their strategic value uh, realization process. Uh, through agile TBM value stream management uh, tools and processes. And I've been helping uh, companies do that for probably longer than I'd like to admit, more than a decade, um, uh, specifically in the consulting around organizational transformations. That's great. That's great. Um, so just to dive into OKRs, what are the business challenges that most organizations or the industry are struggling with um, today that or, or OKRs address? Uh, for the business leaders that we work with, I'll, I'll say the number one uh, issue that or challenge that they have when talking about strategic planning and execution is simply that the top leaders are not aligned with each other, right? And um, they aren't focused on outcomes, or they even have competing goals or objectives that they're coming from. And that often happens because um, leaders are creating their goals or creating their OKRs in isolation. And so what OKRs really help with or, or OKRs combined with a good strategic planning process help with is really bringing alignment around a common set of objectives and then a framework for flowing those objectives to the rest of the organization. Yeah, that's great. So you briefly touch on what OKRs are. Um, how would you say they work and how are they really different than regular goal setting methods? Um, what, what's really different about OKRs is the focus on outcomes, right? That, that clarity around how success will be measured and um, gets leaders thinking more about, hey, what are we trying to achieve? What is the objective? And how are we going to measure that and gets them away from thinking about what are the activities that we have to do? Um, because those activities are really things that you want to flow throughout the rest of the organization and encourage decentralized decision making around, hey, we've aligned the whole organization around what we want to do. Now let's harness the power of our people and our teams to figure out the best way to get there. So it's really that clarity of purpose and creating the environment to allow the innovation um, to align people to those objectives. Yeah, something else that was really powerful at OKRs for me is that it's not only talking about your main goal, but it's also talking about how you're going to achieve that goal with key results. I know the concept of OKRs was popularized by the book Measure What Matters by John Doerr, um, which got a lot of visibility and has been out for a few years now. Um, I'm curious as to know, like, where is the industry at now in adopting those recommendations or has the industry evolved past the initial recommendations in the book? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's worth pointing out that, you know, while uh, Measure What Matters has been a really successful book, um, um, John Doerr really was capturing uh, the successes that he had rolling OKRs out, you know, for several decades ahead of that. And, um, you know, OKRs have been, um, you know, popular since Google started using them, you know, around the, um, around 2000 and kind of really took off in, uh, in Silicon Valley. So they've really been, and, and they, and, and, you know, John Doerr, got it from Andy Grove, who innovated it at Intel in the 1970s. So um, it, so OKRs aren't new, and there's actually a, a really you know good track record of them being used um, over the course of the last several decades. But certainly, you know, the book Measure What Matters really, you know, accelerated that, particularly outside of the Silicon Valley companies that, that had been working with it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the the big 
the the challenge with anything that becomes popular through you know reading in a book or t- going to a training or you know hearing about something that worked in another organization is um the temptation to say hey if we use the structure of an OKR um as written in the book um then we we're going to see giant leaps forward in how it uh, in in the performance in our organization, um, and it doesn't work that way. So I think you know the uh, what we often see happen um, is um, uh, leaders read the book and say, "Oh, this is great." Um, everybody go off and create OKRs for your part of the organization, um, and then those don't really align with each other. There's not really the framework in place um, to flow them through the rest of the organization. And we've, you know, really all we've done is uh, adopt the mechanics of OKRs without adopting, you know, what what John Doerr really is putting forward, which is having a good integrated strategic planning process um, throughout the organization. So, um, so when we when we think about kind of moving beyond the recommendations of the book, that's often tied to um, integrating OKRs with a good agile process um, and incorporating it into lean portfolio management, incorporating it into um, the, the set of tools, software tools that will actually allow those OKRs to be shared broadly throughout the organization. So it, it's really, you know, the challenge for leaders is moving beyond just that simple structure of the OKRs to using it as part of the digital transformation, part of the the, the modernization of the strategic planning process. Yeah. So you touched on how an, um, a tool can really help OKRs. So are there any like examples on how you think a software solution or tool can help in an organization implementing tracking um, OKRs? Sure. So, so I mean, the the biggest challenge that you don't want to have happen with OKRs is, you know, you have leaders or managers create OKRs and then nobody else in the organization knows about them. And, and we see that happen all the time, right? That, that if you can't go to individual teams, individual team members and ask the question, hey, how is what you're doing wrong? Uh, related to or supporting the organizational OKRs, if they can't answer that question, you've got a really big problem because you you you're basically doing strategic planning and OKR planning that's disconnected from the implementation. And having a good software tool um, like Target Process that takes those OKRs and allows them to be easily accessible throughout the organization is really powerful and and it allows um, teams and teams of teams and value streams and portfolio leaders to take those OKRs and break them down into OKRs that make sense within their part of the organization and create that alignment throughout, throughout the rest of the organization. So if you don't have a good software tool to do that, it's really hard to be successful uh, at it. Of course, software tool by itself also doesn't solve the problem, um, right? You need to incorporate that into the uh, the planning and the demos and the reviews at all levels of the organization to really make sure that they're actually uh, being used, being updated um, and uh, pivoting when necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely agree. So we've talked about the big challenge that it solves, what the big challenge that OKR solves, but what about the impact at the team level and the individual contributor level? Um, Would you say there is a positive cultural impact there? There certainly should be, right? And if if we can't trace a good positive impact down to the team um, or individual level, or if you can't measure the the improvement that it's making at the cultural level, right? That's a sign that you're not taking full advantage as an organization uh, of OKRs or of a, a broader agile uh, framework or, or transformation. Um, so, you know, the one of the big things that we're trying to achieve with OKRs is that. 
um, alignment throughout the organization and um, and what happens if um, we go through the motions of OKRs or we go through the motions of a strategic planning process, but what you actually end up with are a bunch of siloed or department specific OKRs that aren't cross cutting, that don't align to actual value delivery across the organization, don't align to your value streams, don't align um, to your products. What ends up happening is you have all of these o- cascading OKRs uh, that eventually comes down to multiple people, multiple parts of the organization making conflicting requests to teams and individuals who are now put in the the position of, hey, I've got six different people in different parts of the organization who are telling me six different number one priorities, what are we going to do, right? And um, we want to avoid that, right? OKR should be getting that alignment um, earlier in the process um, at more senior levels of management so that by the time we get to the teams, we have clarity on on what those priorities are, and then the teams can align their objectives. They can align their individual uh, priority list to the organizational priority list. So if we're not seeing that happen, um, there's a disconnect somewhere. And um, and so that's, you know, that's when uh, doing some root cause analysis and evaluating the process and seeing like, hey, why are we getting conflicting priorities down here at the individual level? Well, you're probably getting that because there's something not working in uh, how you're putting the OKRs down or how to, how you're cascading those OKRs throughout the organization somewhere in the process. So you would say the typical department or roles that would roll out OKRs would start with business leaders and execs on that level. Yeah, so, you know, Ideally, OKRs are being led by the C-suite and the C-suite is coming together, aligning around their organizational priorities and rolling them uh, throughout the rest of the organization. Uh, Of course, OKRs are valuable and can be used at any level of the organization. And um, and by no means am I suggesting that you know uh, department leaders or value stream leaders uh, can't do OKRs if they're if they're not getting it uh, from the C-suite, um, but it's going to have the most impact and going to be most useful to the organization if you get that alignment from the highest levels of the organization throughout the rest of the organization. Got it. Okay. So in your experience, um, what is the best place for an organization to start with rolling out OKRs? Like, how would you recommend uh, an organization to initially implement the OKRs? Uh, Yeah. So the best place to start is with the annual planning process um, at the C-suite level um, and get that alignment um, and then cascade that to the rest of the organization throughout uh, the uh, that annual planning process, and then have a cadence of every uh, quarter uh, reviewing where do we stand with the OKRs? Um, are we making the progress that we want to make? Um, are they still relevant? Right. So, you know, one of the things that we don't want to do with OKRs is lock in unreasonable expectations, right? OKRs as part of an agile process means that one, leaders are setting the objectives, but they're getting feedback from the rest of the organization about are those Mm -hmm. achievable objectives? Um, Are they reasonable? Uh, Can we actually achieve the key results in the time that they want to see, or do we need to make adjustments to them? And we need to be responsive, right? If we get halfway through the year and the market has changed or new opportunities have created, you know, we want the organizational agility to say, hey, we need to make some modifications here to our OKRs based on where we want to go from here. So um, so we we ideally it starts with that uh, annual planning process at the C level and continues throughout the organization. 
That being said, you always have to start with where you can start, right? So if there's a group of excited leaders at the department level or at the division level, at value stream level, um, who want to start incorporating OKRs, that's an awesome place to start to show that it works and then you know, move up to the senior executive level after you've established some credibility with it. Perfect. Um, so for my last questions, um, are there any tips? You've shared some tips and best practices, but are there any tips and best practices that you can share when actually creating the OKRs? Um, yeah. The, so my biggest tip is focus on the effectiveness of the workshop and the process for developing the OKRs, right? As I as I mentioned before, if you if you want to be really impactful with this, you mo- need to move beyond the basic structure of an OKR right? and and just just taking individual objectives and saying, hey, we're going to put them in the format of we will achieve this objective as measured by these key results. That by itself isn't isn't going to be transformative. What is transformative, where the biggest value uh, is, are the conversations that happen among the leaders that create the OKRs. So, um, biggest tip: focus on doing that workshop, those um, those planning sessions really effectively, and then capture those OKRs in a system that actually can share those um, those objectives and key results throughout the rest of the organization and effectively capture whether we're on track with them or not. And what I and that system needs to be composed of both a good software tool that capture and shares the OKRs as well as the good agile framework that has the set of, planning sessions, meetings, system demos, um, and so on that feed that information back into things like a portfolio sync or a, an OKR sync that periodically looks at the results. Thank you so much, Christopher, for joining us today. And thanks all for joining us as well to watch in. Um, please feel free, free to drop a comment um, if you have any questions um, and look forward to seeing you in our next one. <laughs>